Hey guys, it's Aaron. We are in part two of our architectural modeling playlist here. And this time we're gonna take the reference image we imported last time and start drawing the exterior walls. So not, more, not much more to talk about there, we're just gonna hop right in. So if I look at this model, um, what all I'm concerned with right now are these walls around the outside. That's what I need to get in. So there's a couple different ways I could go about this. We're gonna look at those few different ways. Uh, one option I have is to pick a corner to start at. So I'm gonna grab this point right here and I'm shooting for the middle of this big black line. We talked last time about how there's some slop in here as far as the width of this two inch wide line that I'm tracing. Um, so I'm gonna pick about where the middle of this black line crosses the middle of this black line. I think that's right about here. So what I'm going to do this first time, this first, first go at this uh, exterior, is I'm going to draw a line all the way around the building. And I'm going to do that using my inferences. So I'm going to snap to these different lines and my keyboard, because I'm going to type in these dimensions. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start coming up this way. I'm on the green axes, and I can see my first dimension is 16 foot. We don't need this open right this second. So I'm gonna go ahead and just move up here. So I'm on the green axes and I'm just gonna type one six feet and hit enter. I'm gonna drag this way and, and down there I have a five foot dimension. So I type five foot, enter. I'm gonna drag up another 16 foot. So you can see as I'm coming around here, this one is foot and inches. So I'm gonna type 19 foot six inches and hit enter. I don't have to put a space or a dash or anything between them. I can just type those numbers in. But you can actually see as I do this, how quick this is. The nice thing about doing it this way is I don't have to worry about looking at uh, a drawing somewhere else. I can actually do this without taking my eyes off the screen. It makes for very, very quick input. Um, I can do this obviously referring to a print set of drawings that I have sitting next to me, but this is kind of nice because as I'm inputting and chatting with you guys, which is one of my favorite things to do, of course, um, I can just kind of keep rolling through here. I don't have to hop back and forth. Um, it just, it makes it a lot easier to input. So this reference image is really nice. So even though I'm not using the left reference image as like uh, something I'm gonna snap to, I don't have snap points here because well, because I don't have snap points, it's just an image, but I can still speed up my input by just uh, referring to that image. So here's where I do a little check. So my first point was right here. I went all the way around and I have two lines left, one up and one over. So my first check here, I'm gonna start coming along this green line and I can hold down shift to lock to that line. I could also hit the left arrow key to snap there too. If I come over here and mouse over this point, boom, and I can check the dimension in the lower right corner. And it says it's six foot. It also says it's supposed to be six foot on the plan. So that is an awesome thing. This is a little plan check I can do. Um, if I did that and it said it was five foot nine, I would know that there was somewhere back here, there's a three foot or three inch discrepancy that I'd wanna go chase down and figure out where that is. So I'm gonna come back this way and uh-oh, look at that. I have a 27 foot one inch line where I should have a 27 inch line. So this is one of those spots where I can actually run through here and try to figure out, well, what went wrong? So what I actually want to do is, so this is supposed to be a 27 foot line. I'm going to go ahead and draw it as 27 foot and I'm going to hit enter. And now it's small and it's on top of this line, but I have a one inch. I got to figure out where that came from. In this case, there's some dimensions I know are correct and some that may be off. And uh, I'm 99% sure that the issue is right here. I'm pretty sure this is supposed to be 13 foot 10. If, if I'm uh, this is my own design, then I could come in here and grab this and just make a change. Um, you can actually kind of tell there, the rest of my lines, like they're pretty well in the middle. This one you can actually see is on the outer edge. Um, in this case, I am the building designer, and uh, I'm going to confirm that uh, that was a fat finger right there, and that should be 3 foot 10, not 11. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab every line that happened after this incorrect dimension, 
and I'm just going to click around like this. And then I'm going to move them from here over one inch. All right, because I was going straight, that moved this dimension right here to 13 foot 10. I can double check by clicking point to point. Look at my dimension lower right corner, 13 foot 10. All right, because I didn't actually draw that last line, it didn't close and give me a face. But if I just draw over one of these lines, boom, I'll get my face there. All right, that's looking pretty good. Um, at this point, I have basically traced the shape of the floor. One thing I might want to do at this point is group this. This is an excellent reference plane to use for drawing my floor below, um, potentially uh, just as a reference for the ceiling underneath that in the, in the basement. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to make a copy of it. I'm going to put it into a group and I'm going to hold on to it. Um, I'm going to double click into the group. I'm going to grab and control C that surface. And then I'm going to come back out. And now again, I just want to keep this as a reference. I want to set it aside. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to put it onto a new layer, which is going to be called my, well, that was a Freudian slip, basement. And I will go ahead and grab this group, put it onto my basement layer, and turn that off. That is for use later when I want to go in here and uh, add that in. In the meantime, I still on my clipboard have a copy of that outline I just drew. So if I, rather than hitting paste right now, if I come in here and I say paste in place, I'm assured that I'm right back where I was beginning. So this is the same exact outline I drew before, and now I also have, just as a reference to use later, my uh, basement group as well. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go to offset and I'm gonna offset this. Uh, my exterior walls are five and a half inch walls. So I'm gonna put in 5.5 and enter. At that point, I can delete that inside surface and I can drag these up to whatever they are, nine foot. And I could at that point be finished. I could triple click, make that a group and assign that group then to my layer exterior walls. That could be it. I could be finished at that point. But because there's so many different ways to do things, let's look at one other option. I'm going to go ahead and just slide this over. I'm going to slide it over 100 feet. That way, if I want to bring it back in later, I can bring it in exactly that much. Something else I could consider doing is going to my start point again. So I'll click right here. And what I'm going to do instead of what I did last time where I traced the outside, I'm going to come over this way, 5.5, and then I'm going to draw a rectangle. So I'm going to draw a line straight up on the blue axes, 9 feet. I'm going to come over on the red axes, 5.5 again, and then right back down to the end. That's going to be a surface. So what I could do right now, again, many different ways to do this, is I could, rather than draw the outline on the floor, I could click here, pull it this way, and say 16 foot. That's going to give me just this one wall. This is good because what this actually lets me do is if I want to, I could actually group and keep this as a single wall. So what I could do is, I, obviously I want to... I want to start my next wall, so I'm going to do is I'm going to go to push pull again. Rather than just pulling out, I'm going to hit the modifier key and look down the, in the lower left corner. Option or control on Windows will give me a new face. So as I pull this across like this, I'm going to say this is 5.5 because that again is my wall width. Once that's done, now I could actually come in here and I could say, okay, let's start by with some precision grouping right here. I could take that make that a group, that wall is now separate from this wall, which is going to come across, zoom out, five feet. And I could take that and make that into a group. So it's another option. Whoops. Oh, I'm missing a piece right there, huh? All right. 
This, the nice thing about this is if I'm doing something like uh, a remodel, so I'm, I'm gonna model this house with the intention of blowing this whole section out and adding a whole nother room. Well, it's gonna be nice to be able to take these walls and move them around as opposed to grabbing those connected surfaces and trying to drag them back and forth. It really, this point is a preference thing. This comes down to how do you want to do it? Another option, of course, is I could always come in here as I'm drawing these walls, I could actually come in here and, oops, with a rectangle, I come in here like this. I can tell that, that rectangle is 16 foot by 5.5. And then I could shove that up here. Whoops, need a reference point. And I could make that a group. And I can see that's on the wrong side, so maybe bring that in here like this. I come in here, shove this wall link width over. Again, depending on what you need to get out of this, this is up to you. So if I'm gonna actually take these different walls and I'm gonna go in and frame them, so I'm gonna actually use this as a template for my wall framing, well, it's probably gonna be good to have these in separate groups anyhow. If my only interest is in architectural, where I need my exterior wall shapes, I'm gonna come in here, cut a section to create a drawing from, then doing something like this, where I have a, my main group and offset it, is probably just fine too. Either way works, and either one is an option. This is one of those spots where you get to make the decision. Either one of these solutions will work, but the one that works best is the one that's gonna help you with your workflow. Hopefully that's helpful. Hopefully you'll let us know. Tell us what you thought in the comments down below. Maybe subscribe or give us a like. Let us know if you have a variation on this workflow or something else you'd like to see more of. We like making these videos, but we like them a lot better when they help you with what you need to do. Thank you.